Hello everyone and welcome to Forza Motorsport. It's been six years since the last Forza Motorsport title and finally we've got a new one. We've had Horizon 5, we've had Horizon 4 in the time that it's taken them to make this game. Six years of development is a long time for a motorsports game but I'm hopeful that those six years have been put to good use as they've gone away and learned from their mistakes of Forza Motorsport 7. In my opinion, I didn't really enjoy Forza Motorsport 7. It felt like a really weird mishmash of a game with loads of features that were sort of half-baked and not fully cooked. And hopefully this game has rectified those problems. So in this video, we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive, my first impressions of the game, show you guys everything that Forza Motorsport has to offer, and basically see if this is something that would interest you um, or not. So let's jump into it, and without further ado, we're going to have a look at the career mode. Actually, just before we jump into uh, career, there are the other racing options. So you've got the tab on the left with race, you know, you've got your cars and whatever. You've got career, multiplayer, free play, rivals, and private multiplayer. So all sort of standard modes that you would expect to see in a Forza Motorsport game at launch. I will go into more detail on featured multiplayer because that has been completely revamped, uh, which I'm very happy to see. So first things first, you still have your sort of standard playlist of events. You still have like five or six tracks that you have to do in order to win the championship, much like most motorsport games have been in the past. However, this time around, it seems to work a little bit different in that there's more depth to each event that you will do. So, I'm currently doing the Build for Sport playlist. It's only the second or third playlist I've done in this game. And as you can see here, you have this screen before you join the race. Now, usually on the old Forza Motorsport titles, you just select a car, upgrade it to the PI that you would want, and you could then go away and race. This time around, Forza has completely redone the upgrade system of how you can improve your car's specs in this game. Now I expect this feature to be quite controversial amongst fans. Now I've put around 20 hours into playing this game so far and I'm finding this progression system to be good. Something that we've wanted for a long time in Forza Motorsport, or in Forza in general, is a good progression system. Now all the upgrades for your car are limited to what level you are. So you will only unlock certain things when you reach the level requirement. To get these upgrades, not only do you need to be a required level, you also need to use CP, which I believe stands for car points. Each playlist that you have will have an allocated amount of car points that you can use to upgrade your car. It's sort of how they balance the specs in the uh, single player racing. As you can see, I've got this Toyota Supra and I put on a handful of upgrades that are all worth X amount of car points. I believe you unlock these as you progress through the car leveling system, you don't use credits to upgrade your cars anymore. It's a very weird system, and I'm gonna do a video deep diving into this um, a little bit in the future because it's still quite new to me. But if I'm being honest, upon first impressions, I don't think this system is as bad as what some people will make it out to be. Sure, it's not perfect, but I don't think it's terrible. I think there is definitely something here that they could easily tweak maybe in a few updates. I think the car level's quite high, level 50, to unlock everything. I think if they brought that down to maybe 30, it would make it grindy, but not to the point where I'm having to spend hundreds of hours being able to upgrade every car in the game. So once you've added your upgrades of choice to your car, you are then loaded into your race. Now, where this differs from previous Forza Motorsport titles is that you don't just go straight into the race. This time, you have the ability to actually practice on the circuit and actually learn the layout and configuration of the course. So as practice sessions go, it's not as in-depth or as tedious as the Formula One games, I would say. You don't have to do tyre simulations, you don't have to do lap time simulations as such, you don't have to do qualifying, whatever. All you have to do is complete a lap time and complete a certain number of laps to receive a bonus payout for your race. I don't mind this, personally. I don't think this is a bad feature. It's quite nice, especially for some of the newer tracks on this game, for me to sort of pop in and sort of learn the configurations and layouts of these tracks and see how my car handles around them. Another thing that they've added finally into single player are penalty systems. This was something that a lot of people I think wanted for multiplayer but they've also added this feature into single player as well. So once you complete the required practice laps or bonus lap time you are then loaded into what you would expect to be a qualifying session. However, for some reason Forza hasn't done this. 
This is probably one of my first major gripes with the game. There's no qualifying in single player, as far as I'm aware. I've only done about three or four campaign events as of recording this video, and not once have I done a qualifying session. Instead, you are greeted with this screen where you get to choose where you start your race. Now, I get it from a gameplay mechanic point of view, but I do feel like it's a bit of a letdown to not have qualifying in single player. If anything, I'd rather have qualifying than practice, because at least you could do the practice whilst you're qualifying. Or you could adapt what they do in the uh, multiplayer lobbies, which is you have an allocated amount of practice time, and within that time, you then have to set three qualifying laps. That feature I love in multiplayer, and I think it's a bit of a shame that they've not added it into single player, or at least have the option to qualify or choose where you start. At least give us some options rather than giving us just this one. Anyway, apart from this, there's also the new difficulty and rule set bonuses that you can get too. I've set my driver tar difficulty to 6. I feel like that's quite a nice balance for me to start at the back of the grid and work my way to the front. I could tweak it to 7, but then it gets... I find that the AI who start at the front just literally just fly away into the lead. Proper Max Verstappen, you know? Um, and then the rule set bonus, which I really like. I'm actually playing this game with simulated damage, fuel, and tyres. I find that to be the most... Um, entertaining because it makes me, well, it forces me as a driver to not go plowing into a corner and just crashing into the AI. I do have to respect my car in some way, shape, or form. So I like that rule set, but sport rules are also good as well. So once you've chosen your difficulty and selected your grid position on the grid, um, you then have the option to choose what tyres and how much fuel you'd like to have in the car. Now, my Toyota Supra here, I haven't got race tyres on it yet, so I have. Uh, the locked street tyre compound added to my car. However, I can take some fuel out or add fuel into my vehicle if I so wish. So once you've completed that as well, it's then pretty much just business as usual. It's just sort of standard Forza racing experience. I should stress these are quite early on races in the game, so I don't think pit stops and, and sort of refueling um, has been added to these races, but I imagine as you progress through the campaign, the races get longer you know, your tyres will wear down, you'll need to refuel. So those sort of strategic plays will come into uh, will come into play uh, later on in the career. But as you can see here, I'm racing with 23 different drivers, and the AI I find to be really weird. The mid-pack seem to be proper, like, grade 5, crayons up their nose level of intelligence driving ability. But then the front seven cars seem to be a little bit more competitive. The main criticism I've had so far is that I find that the AI just break on the apex randomly with no warning or point or reason whatsoever. So I've done a few races around Silverstone and they just seem to break all of a sudden and I don't know why. Um, but the front runners seem to be quite competitive. They really have improved the AI on this game. Is it the best AI I've ever raced? Probably not. Is it more competitive than it has been in previous Forza titles? Yes, 100% yes. So it is nice to see that they have gone away and they have tweaked that. But that's pretty much it in terms of what there is to see throughout the career mode. You get penalties, as I mentioned, if you cut the corner, if you smash into someone's car, it's gonna penalize you too. Overall campaign, standard. It's, it's nice to see these new features that they've added with pit stops and such. Um, and throughout the course of this game, because it's effectively gonna be a live service going forward, they're gonna add more career mode events and races in the future. So once you complete your race, you get your standard, you know, leaderboards of what the championship standings are, what your fastest lap times were, did you get any penalties. You also get these nice new little cutscenes which show your cars um, on like a podium place and then it's got your drivers on the podium too. You can once again customize how your driver looks in this game. However, the feature isn't as in-depth as it is in, let's say, something like Gran Turismo. But thankfully, they haven't got those stupid, horrendous cosmetics that they had in Forza Motorsport 7. They seem to have toned down on that stupidity, which I am grateful for. So there we go. Once you complete your race, you get your credits, you get your driver XP, and you then unlock stuff for your car, because obviously you've just been racing in it, and you get rewards as well. So that's very nice. I really enjoy that. So next we're going to jump into the cars of Forza Motorsport. Now I am going to have a full car list video coming out today so make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that. But I just want to show you guys the um, the categories of cars that are in this game, the divisions, um, because they have seemed to have cut all of the fat and the silly vehicles that Forza Motorsport 7 seem to have, like the Aerial Nomad and the Razor and the pickup trucks, all those sort of 
weird vehicles. I'm glad to see that they've finally gotten rid of those because it just felt like they ported them from Horizon 4 into Motorsport just so that they could say, oh, we've got 700, 800 new cars in the Forza Motorsport franchise. And it didn't really work because what I want in Forza Motorsport, at least, are proper race cars or even just road cars that I could upgrade to be good track day monsters. Now, there are two sides to this argument. One is they've finally gotten rid of all those stupid vehicles and they've trimmed the fat to, you know, give us better racing cars. But on the flip side, the funny vehicles are what originally made Forza Motorsport quite fun and quirky, you know, like the Toyota Prius um, and the smart car. So I can see an argument for both. But the SUVs and the off-road vehicles, I think, were just stupid. So I'm kind of glad to see them gone. In terms of the cars that they have added to this game, they seem to have still got models from 2013 and they've not updated to the newer ones. The one that springs to mind is the, uh, the A45 AMG. This car's had a facelift and I think two new versions of it since 2013, but yet we've still got the 2013 variant in this game. So there are quite a few cars that I wish they would have updated to the newer models um, that they seem to have not. But then there are also a lot of new vehicles that they added to Horizon 5 that suit motorsport down to the ground. You know, you've got the new Lotus, uh, you've got the new Porsche Taycan. I love seeing all these sort of new vehicles added from Horizon into motorsport that fit this sort of setting. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are the tracks that Forza Motorsport has to offer. It has 20 tracks in total, and overall, I think the track list is pretty solid. You've got tracks in here like, you know, Catalonia, that's the new Formula One layout from 2023. You've got the Nürburgring GP circuit. You've got Silverstone. You've got Virginia International Raceway. You've got Lime Rock. You've got some nice tracks. You also have five new circuits that are brand new to the Forza Motorsport franchise. You've got Kyle Army, you've got Mid-Ohio Raceway, um, and you've also got, I think, Forza original tracks like Hakone, and I want to say Grand Oak. Both really good circuits, by the way. The weird thing is, they seem to have cut quite a lot of tracks from the Forza catalog too. Gone is Bernie's Alps, as is the Top Gear test track. So whether or not they just don't fit the vision of this new Forza Motorsport game, or if they are going to be tracks that they are currently remaking and will be releasing in monthly updates down the line, who knows? We know that we're getting Yas Marina, I think, next month, the new uh, Abu Dhabi Do circuit, and then next year we're getting the Nord Slifer, I think, in January or February, early next year. So they are going to be supporting this game with new content as it goes forward. As I mentioned, it's a live service game. So I think 20 tracks to launch with, a nice variety of circuits too, um, I think it's a solid list, but I'm looking forward to seeing what tracks they add going forwards. Another major thing that I should probably touch upon before ending this video is the featured multiplayer. Now, I am going to do another deep dive sort of video into the multiplayer on its own at a later date. But I just want to mention that they have completely reworked how the multiplayer works in Forza Motorsport and it's for the better. Now, before you start panicking, the standard hopper lobbies that used to be in the old Forza Motorsports with, you know, your E-Class cars all the way up to X-Class cars, they are still going to be a thing in the open events. However, for the core and main gameplay aspects of this Forza Motorsport multiplayer, they seem to have taken a hybrid approach from iRacing and Gran Turismo. You will have a lobby that starts every 20 minutes on a different track with a particular set of cars. You join the lobby, you do a practice session, you do three qualifying laps, and then you go into a race. Complete the race, you either win, you lose, you get some XP, and the racing experience so far from what I've played has been utterly fantastic. All the cars seemingly have been very well balanced in these lobbies, and the overall racing experience that I've had with other people has been fantastic. The penalty system seems to work quite well on multiplayer, but then again, Everyone I've been playing with on this sort of early access test and review period has been quite uh, sensible and not very chaotic, which is what I'm probably going to see when I start playing this game in multiplayer lobbies when the public get hold of this. But who knows? Maybe the safety rating system will work, which you can see uh, on screen now. You can see that you've got a safety rating. Um, it's based from 1,000 to 5,000. Um, and it's from E all the way up to S. The last thing I want to touch on is something that I mentioned earlier on, and that's the um, the driver customization. You can customize what race suit your driver wears. Unfortunately, there's no sort of uh, suit designer or helmet designer that uh, the likes of Gran Turismo may have. You just get your pre-selected designs, and if you have the VIP Super Duper Mega Edition, you get four limited or exclusive designs just for you as well. 
But apart from that, that's pretty much everything I can think of to talk about in this Forza Deep Dive first impressions video. Overall, I'd say this is a good reboot for the Forza Motorsport franchise. I think it needed it in hindsight. They definitely needed to sort of take a step back, look at the franchise and sort of reconfigure what Forza Motorsport actually was. Because it sort of had a weird transitional period from Forza Motorsport 4 to Motorsport 5. A lot of people like the sort of fun and sort of arcadey game modes that you had in like Motorsport 3 and Motorsport 4, like, you know, cat and mouse, car football and all that good stuff. And then to just completely gut that with Forza Motorsport 5 felt weird. It, it, it did feel like a step backwards, even though graphically it was very pretty. This now is a reboot for the franchise. It's a live service game, which I'm hoping will be for the better. Um, and we're only going to see. We're only going to see how this game progresses as the months go by. So thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for plenty of Forza Motorsport and maybe Horizon content coming out in the future. Leave a comment down below as well. I'm curious to see and read what you guys think of this game so far. What are your first impressions from just seeing this gameplay here? And once the game comes out, I'm very curious to see what you guys think of it too. And maybe we'll do some live streams and open lobbies with some of you lovely people. But thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, goodbye.